Hello everyone, I was playing around with a ransomware sample recently, which is preying on the fears of COVID-19, otherwise known as the coronavirus. So I took some screenshots and I've got a video of the sample running in a Windows 10 virtual machine. But I'll take a look at it and uh, show exactly what has happened. So it started with a very topical email with the subject of March General Meeting Coronavirus. Hi everyone, find below March General Meeting Coronavirus with a password. Regards, yes, I've had to redact the individual's name because this was one of our customers. There's no attachment in the email, but that URL does go to a Tumblr blog using the Tumblr shortener. And we can see mention of a website called dotuning.com. Taking a look at the Tumblr post from Dope Coffee Traveller, uh, the post has now been removed. I should have screenshot it yesterday when I had this sample to look at, but it did go through to this website which simplified view of it is dotuning.com forward slash agenda.zip. Be very careful if you're going to go there, and I would strongly recommend you only look at this in a virtual machine, not on your main system. The website was created in 2012. It has a minimal amount of traffic, although it's been rapidly increasing recently with a peak of 21 DNS requests per hour, and this data comes from Cisco's Umbrella and OpenDNS stats. Here's a video taken from the virtual machine. It's sped up and of really low quality, so I'm sorry about that. So weirdly, the password couldn't be typed from the number pad, but yeah, from the top row on the keyboard, yeah, one, two, three, seemingly does nothing. Blink and you miss it. So yeah, the agenda was actually an executable file, not a zip file. I'm confirming by right-clicking as it was an application. Well, that file deletion there was the volume backups disappearing. Now, you did have a very slim opportunity to stop that. You wouldn't know what it is, so yeah, <laughs> no chance there. Now, trying to run the executable again just results in an error message. There's not really much in the way of system activity. I mean, you really wouldn't know what's going to happen. My initial run of this malware sample was only 15 minutes long, but uh, there was enough of a fair guess to understand what it would be doing. Two minutes after execution, the volume backups are deleted. And after 20 minutes, the files on hard drive are encrypted. They've all been renamed to this .crypted extension. And there's also a document there that says, help me recover my files. And if we take a look at that note, well, it's actually a ransom note. Attention, all your important files were encrypted. To get your files back, send one Bitcoin, which at the time I was playing with this was worth about 6,800 pounds and contact us with proof of payment and your unique identifier key. We will send you a decryption tool with your personal decryption password. It's got the information where you can buy Bitcoins. There's an email address and a Bitcoin wallet number. So now to dissect this a bit more and see what it has actually done to the hard drive. Well, other than the obvious of encrypting all the files. Firstly, the process trajectory. So I launched the file from Explorer. So that was agenda.exe being launched. It launched another temp file and created a file called client0.exe, which went and launched a lot of other processes, or task kill and con host, VS admin, con host. And yes, that pretty much went on until it launched ARP and Notepad. In terms of DNS traffic, there was nothing much at all, really. There was the website dotuning.com, and it contacted raw.githubusercontent.com. A look at the network streams, that was Internet Explorer downloading the executable file. That was Client0 making contact with GitHub user content. I'm not entirely sure what the rest of the network connections are. I mean, I know what they are, but uh, I don't know who generated it, Windows or the malware sample. Connections to port 68 and 67 are DHCP, so that is an internal network IP address provisioning. So that's likely to be Windows. 138 SMB. Although it's weird that it's going to the broadcast address. So I don't know if that's the malware or whether Windows just does that normally because cut out at the top of the screen here was those connections. So I'm not entirely sure. What I do know for certain are the results from the malware analysis. So we have ransomware backup deletion detected. This was all the volume shadows being deleted, which would prohibit system restore from restoring backups that would have been taken from the computer. We have shadow copy resize detected, so that appears to have actually reduced the shadow storage backup area to 400 megabytes. So that would prohibit future backups from being taken, or really limit the size of future backups. We have protocol weakening with the SSTPSVC service being stopped. 
I believe that means remote desktop connections can no longer be made from the computer. We have disabling of endpoint security, so in order that is Kaspersky, Net Backup Bare Metal Restore, and McAfee endpoint security. Kaspersky was also stopped via the command line, so that is further weakening of the system. Does that show any origins of this malware sample in that they focused on Kaspersky, a Russian antivirus? I'm not really trying for the Russian propaganda here, it's just a massive coincidence that they've stopped the Russian antivirus and no others. We have infection of other drives where access was attempted against a USB drive that is on the virtual machine, as well as every drive letter from A to Z being accessed. So yeah, literally A through to Z. Now, had any of those been network drive, that would have been lateral movement of the malware, or lateral movement of encryption. If it so happened that any of those network drives contained backups, then the backups would be gone as well. The backups perhaps for the entire organisation. We also have attempts being made for lateral movement via access of the ARP table, the address resolution protocol. This would be examining what other devices there are on the network. Unfortunately, this was just a virtual machine in a cloud environment, so I don't know what other access would be made against other systems. So in conclusion, it's not just the file encryption that is the problem. You also have the weakening with the disabling of security products and the reduced backup area on the hard drive. The lateral movement across alternate drives on the system and attempts across the network is a huge reminder of the importance of the separation of backup devices. A backup to the same hard drive on the system is not a backup at all. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.